Coming up, a condolence motion for a much-loved Rosewood resident, a red seat to highlight DV, a committee with no reports, Ipswich Central latest, an update on flood buybacks, council looking for feedback on what you want in a repaired college's crossing, and councillors seek divine intervention. It's Friday, November 25, 2022, and I'm Alan Roebuck. Welcome to Ipswich Today, which acknowledges the traditional custodians of the land on which it is produced and pays respects to elders past, present and emerging. This podcast is supported by Kinetics, people-powered web hosting trusted by Australian businesses since 1999. Mayor Theresa Harding joins the show following the November 24 meeting of Ipswich City Council. Thank you for speaking with Ipswich today, Mayor Harding. Thank you, Alan, and thank you to listeners. We're here to talk about the November 24 Council meeting. Started off on a sad note with a condolence motion for the legend around Rosewood that is Arnold Reek. Look, sad, but I I think that he's, um, you know, the service of his life was... um, celebratory. It was a real celebration of everything he'd achieved. So it was a very important notice of motion for us because he's you know, a legend in Ipswich, especially in Rosewood. Under matters of public interest, Councillor Kunzelman addressed the Chamber on domestic violence and there's a, a red seat now in place. Um, Councillor Kunzelman is a long-term Zonta member. She's a very proud Zonchan. Um, and today actually starts the day of 16 days of activism to, to stop domestic and gender-based violence around the world. And, yeah, we've unveiled the red bench in Tilma Place. And it was a very moving ceremony. We had uh, Vanessa Fowler, OIM, from the Alison Baden Clay Foundation be there for the unveiling. And um, I think it was something that's very dear, near and dear to Kate's heart. So it was a really good matter of public interest that Kate raised. Getting into the meeting proper, the Economic and Industry Development Committee. Its report to Council this month had no reports from officers and it's not the first time. Does this send a good message to the community that the Council is uh, getting good value from the Department and this committee? I think just the number of reports doesn't necessarily mean how productive that committee is or what's happening there. Um, Next week when we have our committee meeting, there's actually five committee reports for that committee. And one of those is a significant report. It'll be on the economic development strategy that we've spent a lot of time working on. So, look, I'll leave that up to the members of the public, but I don't think the number of committee reports do reflect uh, the work that's been happening in council. The Ipswich Central Redevelopment Committee is one that is always worth a look and work has started or is starting on the Commonwealth Hotel extension. When will that open? Uh, look, we're being told it's going to be opening before Christmas next year, so we're happy to be able to have a nice beer there uh, next next year. It's great to see the extension start. Um, if you're driving through uh, Nicholas Street Precinct or walking through, you will hear the, the jackhammers going and, and construction happening. It's great to see it proceeding. How yeah. many new businesses are now trading in Nicholas Street? We've had quite a few new open up. Uh, the Nicholas Street Precinct, we've had that dumpling place open. We've got the Oikos Coffee Van, Sombrero, Gelatissimo. Terry White Kenmart, we're expecting uh, Stella Rossa to open up either this week or early next week, uh, which is fantastic news. Uh, Sushi Hio is still undergoing its fit out, but that'll open before Christmas. Uh, we're also expecting uh, that Bun Bun Bao to, to open, as well as Aesthetica and Sophia Nails to open up in the new year. So it is happening, and I think it's probably important to see that the, there are some shops that are opening there and some retail outlets that are opening that aren't, don't belong to, to council. They belong to private landholders who've been long-term investors in the CBD there. So the Rusty Nail, the little pretzel shop and Miss Jackson all opened uh, in the last 12 months and um, they're going really well. You raise a good point there, Mayor Harding. Yes, not all the buildings facing Nicholas Street are under council ownership and those no. those other private owners firing up their tenancies as well, which is good to see. Is council using any technology to count the foot traffic in Nicholas Street? Council has installed a number of traffic counters at the key entry points to Tuma Place. Um, it's really important for us to ascertain visitation numbers. That's probably the first thing that any future tenant will ask is what are the visitation numbers and that uh, the higher those are, obviously, the, the more that we can charge for, for rents. Under the CEO's report, I'm looking at the Resilient Homes Fund. Are you happy with how that's progressing with flood affected residents? I think we have to remember that this is the first time that any government has offered this type of program. It's a voluntary buyback program. Queensland Reconstruction Authority have done a tremendous job. So I'm I'm very happy with the progress of it. Um, And when you look at the actual numbers, I've got the most up-to-date numbers from from yesterday, Mm -hmm. uh, actually, Alan. So if I just look here uh, in in Ipswich, we've had... um, 162 properties that have uh, identified as part of the voluntary buyback. 
Um, we've had uh, 59 valuations that have been conducted by QRA, uh, 33 offers have been presented and 29 have been accepted and we've um, executed the contract for 11 homeowners and four have been settled. So we are seeing progress and we're also seeing progress in the raise and the retrofit programs as well. Well, that is good to see, uh, considering it's still under 12 months uh, since mm. the first flood in February. What about Council's own claims for flood recovery? Uh, h- how much is that costing Council? Look, we have budgeted $30 million in our, our budget. Uh, we're expecting it to be you know, quite an expensive um, bill, unfortunately. But I guess what we're doing in Council is um, we have put in our list of 27 projects to the Queensland Reconstruction Authority. They have provided provisional approval for that, so that's around $25 million. Um, some areas like Colleges Crossing, looking at up to about $15 million to, to rebuild that. So we're going through that process of more detailed uh, works for QRA and hopefully those will get approved. I'm glad you raised Colleges Crossing because I'm, mm. I'm, I'm getting people asking me of, of all things what's happening at Colleges Crossing because uh, the, the experience from 2011 and 2013, uh, a lot of people are saying don't rebuild it the same, have reduced infrastructure on the mm. most flood prone parts, e.g. the barbecues and shelters. Is council considering that or, or what's the thinking? Look, it's a considerable amount of money. Um, you know, we've had to build back after 2011, 2013, and now now. It's a lot of taxpayers' money. Um, it's the view of the council that we will do a community consultation. Um, we're also engaging the, pe- the the council staff who actually maintain it day in, day out, but it's really important for the community to come involved. I think what will happen is that we'll probably any, any equipment will have to be a bit further up so it doesn't get flooded. And we do know that better brick buildings do stay there. Uh, we do know things like the, um, the cafe that was there, that was a demountable building. Um, you know, that was also very difficult. We only had, you know, a day's notice of the, of the floods, not several days' notice like previous floods. So, but even for a demountable like that, you still need to disconnect water, electricity, sewerage, remove the fridges, the foods, remove the shade sails, get a flat big truck, have it craned on. So, you know, I, I'm sort of personally keen to see an area that's really vibrant for food trucks to make it really food truck friendly. Um, let's see what we can get down there because it, we, we all love it. We love going to colleges crossing. And so let's get, a, get something there that's um, really resilient. I've had a number of people send me newspaper articles from 2013 where I think council's given a million dollars to flood proof colleges crossing. Obviously, in hindsight, um, that's just not feasible. So I think we should listen to the community and see what they'd like to see there and see what's feasible. I think there was an overuse of the term flood proof, maybe flood resilient, yes. but I don't think yes. you can make anything <laughs> at that level flood proof. Now, I heard you mention food trucks instead of a mm. permanent cafe. Is there any thought of building a, uh, a permanent cafe further up the hill once again? I think these are great ideas. I think when we have community consultation, I would love people to let us know. If that's what you're after, I think let us know. Now's the time to look at it. We are uh, we are confident of securing just over $14 million in funding for that. So let's get some good ideas out there and, and build a really, you know, and enhance the place. Also on the November council meeting agenda was the monthly financial performance report. Now, this would normally be waved through with a unanimous vote and usually not much discussion from memory. However... This month, Councillor Jonick abstained from voting without giving a reason. Are you any of the wiser why there wasn't a unanimous vote on the monthly financial report? No, look, I did email her and um, I, I don't know the reasons, but I think um, she's working with the CFO and the CEO on things. Um, look, I, I, I don't see any irregularities. We've just been through a, a full audit with the QAO with our annual reports, but Nicole's very switched on, so I'm very open to hearing what her feedback is. And the meeting wrapped up with what I think is an unusual notice of motion from Councillor Ireland looking for divine intervention at the next council election, perhaps, <laughs> but uh, asking for a, a roster of the ministers fraternal to do the opening prayer. And I note that Councillor Ireland said it was historical that council used to do it. Well, it must be a very long time ago. My recollection is that special occasions called for a uh, minister of a church to do the opening prayer. What, what, what was the thought among councillors for this one? Yeah, look, it was... Um Again, it went through with eight votes and one abstention. I think the view of the council was that we embrace our tradition. I think it was uh, we're very keen to have multiple faiths, so making sure it's a, a true uh, one of multiple faiths. It's something that we've been discussing for some time. I know, um, obviously, we came in as in council where there was COVID and a lot of restrictions. The very first council meeting we had, we had 
um, local traditional owners come in and do a, a welcome to country for us. And we just haven't been able to have um, that happen really. Um, but now as we come out of COVID restrictions, it'd be great to see more interaction from our community for opening prayer and acknowledgement of country. It's been about 10 years or possibly more in the making, the new Springfield Central Stadium with the emphasis on central there, uh, Mayor Harding. The AFLW Grand Final is coming to Ipswich. How good is that? Oh, look, we're all lines mad, I think. Um, the tickets sold out in less than five minutes, so that gives you any idea uh, about how much we love our sport here. But, yeah, you're right, it's the Springfield Central Stadium, much like we have Lane Park which is also has naming rights with Suncorp, so it's Suncorp Stadium. Um, the stadium there is Springfield Central Stadium and the naming rights is Brighton Homes Arena. So, And I think it's really important to note that it's Springfield Central because it's right next to Springfield Central train station and in Springfield Central um, uh, suburb. Um, to say it's Springfield, there's a, Springfield's another suburb and has another train station. So yeah, it'd be great if people are really cognizant of the fact that it is a Springfield Central Stadium. It'll be interesting to see how many people come by train. Uh, there's a lot of talk of using public transport to get there because Orion Shopping Centre, I'm sure, will be on the lookout for those people who aren't shopping, parking in their uh, car park. But it is great to have the stadium right next door to the train station. Let's hope for a successful weekend and a win for the ladies. Uh, this will be the fourth grand final that the Brisbane Lions will be competing in. They are a phenomenal team. We have two Switch ladies on there, Kate Lutkins and Dakota Davidson. Uh, so we're really blessed to have two Switch locals there. As far as the stadium goes, you could not ask for a train station closer to the stadium. And even the, the um, Queensland Rail car park, again, I... I I was there yesterday and I clocked myself. I actually timed myself. It took four minutes to walk from the car park to, to the um, to the arena. So really great public transport, really great other transport options. We know that there are a number of people who are flying interstate and arriving into Brisbane first thing Sunday morning. So council is working with Brisbane Lions on um, things to do around Ipswich and things like that. So it's great for Ipswich to get that uh, benefit. Many of these people have never been to Ipswich before, so it's great for them to get a better understanding of, of our wonderful city. Mayor Teresa Harding, we'll leave it there. Thanks for speaking with Ipswich today. Thanks, Alan. Thanks, listeners. And a reminder to look for handy links in the show notes, including to Ipswich City Council's YouTube channel, where you can watch meetings live and on demand. Ipswich Today is supported by Kinetics, people-powered web hosting trusted by Australian businesses since 1999. This podcast is also listener supported. Please make a once only gift or regular donation to help keep it online. Just go to ipswichtoday.com.au and click the donate button on the home page to make a payment through PayPal. Follow and stream this podcast from your favorite app, including iHeartRadio and Amazon Music, or play Ipswich Today on smart speakers. Music is supplied by Purple Planet Music. This is Alan Roebuck. Thank you for listening.